brother. Hey, how you doing? Well, share your name with us, please. I'm Joe Diamond. I'm from Milton, Florida. Milton, Florida. Awesome. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Absolutely. And how do you know? With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Tell us how this happened, please. Well, uh, to be quite frank with you, um, I grew up in Assemblies of God. Okay. So I have a different background, a little different background, and uh, I was actually at a men's conference. And uh, there I was really seeking God. I had a hunger that was birthed in my heart, you know, to serve God and the things of God. And, and uh, the Bible says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. That's right. So That's I right. knew that I had a hunger and I had a thirst for righteousness that was inevitable. And I sought God, and at that altar, even though it was at an Assemblies of God altar, I, I sought God, and He filled me with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Wow. How did I know I had the Holy Ghost? With the evidence. I spake. I opened my mouth, and another language come out of my mouth. And, I, and there I knew, there I knew I had received the gift of the Holy Ghost, what the world is seeking. Yes. In the bottom of a bottle, in a needle, in a pill in some weed, whatever you want to call it. They're, they're in ecstasy. But yes. the greatest thing is this right here. I just want to give you this testimony. I'm going to give you a brief testimony of my life. Yes. Because, you see, I was raised in church from knee high to tree high. Okay, <laughs> I was raised on the pew, and I was prayed for in Pentecost, and I was, I, was, I was there. I was involved. You know, I was around that atmosphere of worshipers. But I knew that... As I got away from the things of God and I, and, and, and I grew up a little bit, I had my curiosity. How, how many of you know that curiosity kills the cat? And curiosity <laughs> in the world is very dangerous because I began to get curious and I have an addictive personality. So I said, you know, I want to try a little bit of drink and I want to try a little bit of pills. And, and I want to I want to try some things that are different in the world because then I begin to st I, I begin to lose my hunger and I begin to lose my thirst after the righteousness of God and I said you know what I want to try something different and I begin to hang around the wrong crowd and the Bible says that a little sin a little leaven leaven it, it messes up the whole thing so I had a little bit of sin it's the small foxes that spoil the vine a little uh, sin yes. here just a little drink. Oh, just a little tote, just a one pill uh, that turned yeah. into two pills and three pills and four pills. But to make a long story short, I, I grew up in about 18 or 19 years old. I was working at Winn-Dixie, and I joined the military. I actually uh, I joined the Army, and I said, you know, I want to make a change in my life. I was tired of this. I said, you know, I'm tired of, I'm tired of living in sin. I'm tired of living this way. I, I want to do something different. And that's, I believe... Everybody's they, they, they want they, they seek everything in the world and they and they seek the things of this world to, to fill that void, to fill that void, that emptiness that only listen to me, the only the spirit of God can fill that yes. void. Yes. And so I joined the military in the Army, United States Army in Leesville, Louisiana. I went to Fort Polk. But before that, I got busted in my hometown with ecstasy on me at a party. At late late at night, I was passed out on the couch, and I remember the cops walked in, and they said, "Sir, get up," and they begin to search the whole house, and people begin to disperse the drugs, and they begin to hide the drugs, and they begin to 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 uh, cover up everything. But I and, and and me, I had just a little bit of weed in this pocket, and I had some ecstasy in this pocket, and I began to say, "Okay, I'm going to throw my weed out," not thinking that, okay, ecstasy. That's a third degree, third degree felony. But if I got caught with a little weed, that's a little slap on the wrist. But I got busted with, with uh, ecstasy in my pocket, and they took me to jail. First time I ever been to jail. First time in my life. I was like, wow, I'm going to jail. And I went to jail, and I remember staying the, old, uh, the whole night there, and, I, and they released me somehow, miraculously. I didn't pay nothing, no bond. They released me, and I began to walk down the road. And as I began to walk down the road, I was like, man, there's got to be more than this. I'm in trouble now. You know, my mama picked me up. A great woman of God, she picked me up. And I and I began to go back to my old ways. I began to revert back to my old ways. And then I went to Fort Polk, Louisiana after that. Mind you, I was in the reserves at that time. And I'm sorry I'm kind of going from here to there. But I was in the reserves at that time. So 
I spoke to my first sergeant and the commander of the company, and they said, hey, what we'll do is we'll tell the judge that in two weeks, you're going to go active duty to Fort Polk, Louisiana. And that right there, uh, hopefully that'll get you out of the charges. Well, I ended up getting out of a third degree felony charges dropped to go active duty at Fort Polk, Louisiana. Well, when I went to Fort Polk, Louisiana, oh, I thought I was going to get away from the things of this world. I thought that I was going to get away from drugs. I thought I could run from sin. But in fact, sin was trailing me behind the whole way. It was yeah. trailing me behind the whole yeah. way. And I knew, I said, God, I don't want to do this again. But it came up in my face, sin. See, everybody is offered the opportunity of sin. Everybody has an opportunity to partake in sin or to say, you know what, I choose not to partake in sin. But I chose at that moment, as, as I struggled with that sin, I chose to say, you know what, I'll take an X pill. Oh, well, it's not going to hurt. I'm just going to take one of them. And, and I took one of them, which led to many and many and many more X pills. But that doesn't even stop there. You see, I decided I wanted to go ahead and get my hands on them for sure. So I began to sell them to a whole company. Bravo Company, I believe it was. I was Charlie Company in a signal battalion. And I began to sell them to a whole intelligence company of Bravo Company. And I began to sell it and sell it. I mean, I was selling them. I was throwing them out. I had the whole company high so, on x pill. So it doesn't sound like God had anything to do with your life at this point. Oh, at this point, right now, I was running from the call of God on my life. See, God called me. He called me. And I said, God, forgive me. God, hey, hey, I, you know, but I began to run from God. I began to, I began to backslide. If, if, if so, you would say the word, I began to, I began to backslide from God. I began to run from God. And, and, and people would come to my, come to my barracks and they would try to get me to go to church. And I remember I would just, I would hear the knock on the door. Now, I would this hear is... the knock on the door and, and I would be quiet because. I didn't want them to hear me because I was convicted in my own sin. So this was after you received the Holy Spirit? Yes, 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 yes. After wow. I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you still have the choice to run if you choose to? I still, yes, you do. It doesn't wow. matter. That's, that's why you have to continuously be filled. You have to continuously seek the Holy Ghost and be filled. You have to be filled daily. It, it's a necessity not to only be filled one time. God wants you to be filled daily. He wants you to understand that without the power of the Holy Ghost, that you can't live a sinless life. Without the power of the Holy Ghost, hear me now, you can't live a sinless life. And you see, I didn't really understand that. And I said, you know, God, that was great. And I I understand that I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And, but, you know, I still want to partake in the things of the world. I still want, there's, there's got to be something. So I laid down, I laid down my faith in God and I laid down my hunger and my thirst in God. And that's when I picked up sin again. And I picked up sin. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to wrap this up, but there's just so much in my testimony that I'd be here for days. But I began to sell ecstasy to a whole company, Bravo Company, of people at Fort Polk, Louisiana. And I remember going to a chaplain's retreat, a chaplain's retreat. And I had weed with me, and I was with my buddy, and we were downtown Shreveport, Louisiana, on a chaplain's retreat. We said, hi, why not? We might as well go us free. And I was 19, 20, I was probably 20 years old at that time. I wasn't old enough to drink, but I remember seeing some guys walking towards me and I said, I, got, I know they got what I want. And it was some pills now, it was X pills. And I got my hand on some X pills and I began to take the X pills and I got high and I made my way back to the hotel room where we were staying and I was miserable. I was high and I was lonely and I was still searching. I knew that I was running from God. But I knew that when I went back to that hotel room that something didn't feel right in my spirit. I received a call from a guy in Bravo Company. He said, hey, man, it's going down. They're having a company-wide urinalysis. <laughs> and at that point, man, my heart dropped. I said, listen to me. I said, you don't say my name. Because I, was been, I have been dispersing X pills to the whole company and just getting people high and, and high myself. And I remember he called me, and I said, don't say nothing. He said... I got you, man. He went AWOL, and I ended up actually uh, finding my way back to uh, Leesville, Louisiana. And uh, a couple days later on a, uh, a field exercise that we had, my first sergeant, he came up to me and he said, Private Diamond, he said, come on, let's get back to this Humvee right here. And I, I knew, I said, they know. Somebody said my name. I know they did. And I went to CID, which is the Criminal Investigation Department, 
and they began to put me on trial right there before trial. They said, hey, this is what we have, a list of people, I don't know, it was 10 or more people that said that you have sold them ecstasy. Wow. See, it's amazing. God will use circumstances in your life to bring you back to Him. He'll allow things to happen. See, God didn't make me do nothing. The devil, let me not, I'm not giving the devil credit now, okay? I chose to do this. Just like you can choose to do sin. I chose to sin. But there was a point in my life that I said, okay, I admitted that I had done wrong. And right there, I admitted, I said, you know what? After denying it for about an hour or so, and realizing I wasn't going to get nowhere, and knowing I was wrong, I admitted, I said, yeah, I did sell them ecstasy, but they they did this and they did that, I was still just putting it off on them, instead of taking all the blame and all the good, they sold it too, and they were popping pills, and they were, they were doing it too, but it ended up, I uh, ended up getting a general court martial in the United States Army, which I'm not proud of, but I know that God... He took my mess and He made a message out of it. And I, that's why this message today, I hope that it will speak to your heart today because I know that God had His hand on me the whole way. Even though in my sin, He had His hand. The prayers of my mama and the prayers of my daddy and the prayers of my granny, they were with me. But it took uh, a general court martial and a bad conduct discharge that I received. I got three years. Now, I have never been to prison. I got three years in a bad conduct discharge and I got shackled and chained and I had to walk through an airport and I had to get on a plane and I had to go to Fort Knox Regional Correctional Facility and uh, that was the scariest day of my life right there because of the fact that I knew that I was about to be incarcerated for 36 months of my life, three years, three years of my life there I was and I didn't know, man I thought three years to me seemed like a lot in a jail cell that was surrounding me and it was dark and it was kind of rainy as it is today and I just knew that oh man I've done messed up for sure but in there in there a lot of people find jailhouse religion okay a lot of people find it but I began to seek God I began to seek God and, and I found the favor of God in jail you know with the chaplain there and everything I did find the favor of God tell but us how God, he worked on you God began to work on me he began to he began to just cut me up and, 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 and shake me up and make me uncomfortable and say, come on now, come on, we got to get back to the things of God. we got to get back to, to where we started, the foundations of things. And I actually um, got paroled out on October 10. I found my answer. I got paroled out, and I found my way back to uh, uh, my hometown from prison. I found my, my way back to my hometown. And I thought I was going to go on a Bible study with my friends, but I ended up back dibbling and dabbling. Okay, my testimony is a little different. I was, I was in and I was out. I was lukewarm and I was cold. And I'm just going to tell you how I, how I found my way to an apostolic church. Is whenever I was at my hometown church, my wife that it is today, she came to my church. They had some circumstances and they left where I'm at today. And she came to my church. And I fell in love with this woman, this one God apostolic, holy, holy ghost filled woman. I fell in love with her and I said, you know, I said, I really like you. And she said, you know what, we're going to go back to my church. We found our way back to First Apostolic Church in Milton. And I said, you know what, I'm never going to go there. I said, them people are crazy right there and I'm not going to have anything to do with that. I believed in God and I love God, but they were just a little crazy. But anyway, so I found my way back to First Apostolic Church and there... I had never been baptized in Jesus' name. Okay? Wow. But in that place right there, I received the revelation of who Jesus wa uh, uh, is and uh, was and, and that He was God and there was only one God. And I fought it so much because I never had an understanding of it. I fought it. And in that place at First Apostolic Church, I got baptized in Jesus' name. And I know that I have the gift of the Holy Ghost. I received that prior to dibbling and dabbling in the world. But I, I, I just have so much more life in me now. The Word is so, so much more clear. It's so much more evident in my life. But I just want to say this, that I'm thankful. That I know God loves me. That He's kept His hand of protection upon me. And I know it's raining right now. But I just want to say to you out there that if God can do it for me, he said, I chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I was foolish. 
Michael Randolph, my friend, he was foolish. We were foolish. But God, in His grace and His mercy, in His love for me, He steps out. He, he reached His arm out to me. He said, come on. He said, I know you may have fell, but get back up. A righteous man falls seven times, but gets back up. It doesn't right. matter how, how many times you fall. But I want you to understand, a righteous man will get back up and he will say, I will continue. You can continue. You can do it. You are an overcomer. You, you can. And I just want to say I love you and I thank you for this opportunity to testify about what God's done in my life. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Thank bless you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.